Welcome back. It's the zoo built on a dream. Stephen and Lou had zero experience, but they wanted to create something special. And that is exactly what they did. Hi, Blink! So, Hi, Blink. so Blink. They put on the zoo uniform, they walk down the street, suddenly they're 10 foot tall. We're a place where people belong, with reason some people get up in the morning. Hey Chris. Hey Sam, how are you going? I'm good, how are you? Yep. You're welcome to our zoo. Great to be here. In Mount Evelyn, an hour's drive from Melbourne, there's a very special place. How much do you love him? Love him very much. Victoria and Jessica are volunteer zookeepers. They also happen to live with an intellectual disability. I've also made friends as well, and I was making friends with the animals too. Victoria, Jessica and 40 of their friends who are on the NDIS lovingly care for 450 native animals at the Yarra Valley Nocturnal Zoo. So what's on the menu today? Oranges, carrots, apples, corn. From the kitchen to building the enclosures, there's always something to do. The best part is the animals don't judge and neither does anybody else. Good boy. He loves attention. Does he? He's one of the best animals here. 34 year old Chris introduces me to his best bud, Reuben the Roo. Really learn about animals and how to look after them. It gives you a sense of purpose. Yeah. Before starting here, Madeline was too anxious to speak on the phone to order a cab. Now she's on national television. How long have you been here for? Uh, three years. Awesome. Yeah. And what were you doing before that um, with your time? Nothing much, just chilling at home, really. So it's meant that you can get out of the house and come here and yeah. do something with your time. Yeah. And that must be pretty cool. It's awesome. I love it here. So does 20-year-old Isaac, who lives with Asperger's. Isaac, I'm very glad his mouth is taped up. <laughs> it's definitely improved my confidence for public speaking. It's improved my confidence to be able to socialise. It's improved a lot of things in my life. The keepers also conduct free tours for children. It's all like constricting or it's actually um, wrapping around. That's what they do. Here he goes. Yeah. The zoo's the brainchild of Stephen Handy and Lou Schoon, who quit their full-time jobs with Victoria's Department of Health and Human Services. They had zero zoo experience, but they had a dream. I used to get told that I used to think outside the box. And this is something outside the box. And Lou was just a brilliant at programs. They use tags to indicate when an animal's been fed to help those who have trouble reading. Lots of times, like, we get up in the morning and then we don't go to bed till, like, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, but it's the smile on people's faces at the end of the day. In non-lockdown times, the zoo's open to the public for a small entry fee and profits are used to hold popular social events for the volunteers. One of their greatest success stories, breeding the critically endangered southern brush-tailed rock wallaby, there are only 60 left in the wild. So we're really lucky to have them here. Tim is the zoo's newest recruit. I became unemployed about four years ago and I was looking for something new to inspire and to motivate me. And I guess it found me. We had one girl who advertised a party on our little Facebook thing. She'd never had anyone come to a party before. She, she had 17 people turn up and her mum was in tears. I was just wondering one more thing. Can I say hello to my family? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, hello, my family and everybody. <laughs> I'm sure they're very proud of you watching at home. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, and deservedly so. Stephen and Lou are opening up short-term accommodation for people with a disability and guests will be able to spend a few nights at the zoo, all funded by the NDIS.